This piece right here came off the end face of the front control arm bushing, the flange of that, that faces the back of the car. That's where this came from. If you missed it, when it was coming off, check the other side of the car. Slide is in. Get the rear one in as best as you can. It won't be, it will not be lined up. Right now we're more concerned with dropping the two bolts down and through the front control arm bushing flange just to hold it in place. And we're going to put the second one in back here. Might not be able to see it right now, but second bolt goes in back here. You can run it down a little bit, make sure it go down through the hole. You're not trying to tighten it because a nut goes on the other end. Just trying to get it further down in the hole. Like the front one is not going down, so that's fine. The back bushing is not lined up, that's fine. Now we're gonna drop, we're gonna run up the tire, um, the ball joint into its place on the spindle. The ball joint on the end of the control arm have to go up in this hole. But we need a jack to help us jack it up in there. So we're gonna position the jack right underneath here. I'm gonna locate this up to the hole. Now that it's in the hole, we can jack it up slowly. Let it down a little bit. Okay, jack it up. Make sure when you're doing this, you don't grab hold of the backing plate, which would be this plate right here, and bend that, okay? Take it up. Take it up. Just wiggle it around as you jack it up. You need somebody else with you to do this. Okay, stop. Now we can put the nut on there because we have enough of that ball joint thread protruding. All right, put the nut on there. Let you jack down. Make sure you don't drive that ball joint all the way up because you might have a little problem getting the nut on because of the you know, uh, CV joint, which is right here. Okay, now the nut is on there, I'll run it down a little bit and leave, and leave it just like that. And then go back onto the, putting the rest of the bolts in for the front and the rear bushing. Just for, an F, for your information, this subframe right here have threads in it for these two 22 millimeter bolts, this one and the one in the back, right? So do not force this through. Screw it down into the hole, else you will mess, if you start banging on it, you will mess up the thread. Make sure you start it by hand first. And if you're using power tool, make sure you turn it about three or four turns before you apply the power tool. I'm gonna run these two down. Make sure it's nice and tight.
to the back one. If you don't have power tool, make sure you get yourself a nice breaker bar and put a good oomph on it. If you have a torque wrench and you want to torque it down, look up the torque specs, which I do not have, and tighten it down. Now I'm going to put the, the, trans, the side transmission back on. All you have to do is drop the three studs on the bottom, drop them down in the hole, one on the top. Okay, and then you get somebody to let it down as you guide this into the hole. What I'm gonna do is raise it up a little and get it into the hole. Don't get your finger caught in between this. Raise it up a little, the three on the bottom will be in the hole, the top one will be in the hole a little bit, and then you ask your buddy to let it down. Go ahead, let it down. Yeah. Let it down. Okay, once it starts going up in there, you can let go of it. If you get your finger caught between the transmission uh, mount and that flange, you will holler. Okay, we're gonna replace these two nuts right here. One here, and the other one I cannot see because I'm not under the car. I have to feel and the other one right here. This one is already in place. I'm gonna screw this back up. And then I'll hit it with the air. Dang it, give it a few turns. One is up there a few turns. Air gun. Turn that compressor on. It's good. Do some pressure. I'm gonna at the same time I'm gonna tighten off this one on the put mount and these others. Right? to snap these caps back in place. Okay, that keep uh, the corrosion down, keep water from getting up in there and corroding, making it difficult in the future to loosen those nuts. We had a little problem lining up the rear bushing hole with the hole in the subframe to get the bolt up in there. So what we had to do, which might be advisable when you're doing this job, is to take, disconnect the tire rod end, the sway bar, the top bolt for the sway bar on both sides, move that out of the way so you can move the strut assembly away from the tr control arm get the control arm in a more level position parallel to the floor and then that will make it easier for you to get the back bolt in through here to align, align the holes to get the back bolts in for the rear bushing okay we already have it in there now got the nut on we're not going to tighten anything down yet okay and now we're going to put the ball joint back in the, its hole. Tie rod end back in. Sway bar back in the hole on the strut assembly. Nut on everything and then tighten the whole thing down. You can use your jack handle 
a long bar to press down the control arm so you can line up the hole for the ball joint. Okay, press down. All right, holes lined up. Let it up. Okay, let it up. Take yeah. the bar up. Take the bar up. Okay, jiggle it around. Ball joint will pop up in place. Then you can get the nut back on the top of the ball joint. And tighten that down once everything is else is in place. I'm gonna put tie rod in back in place. Sway bar. Now we leave the sway bar loose because we're gonna be doing the other side. But with um, and if you're not doing the other side, you can pop the sway bar back in place. Okay, just run it, run this end up the thread for the nut for the sway bar. Up in this hole, having a little problem there because there's not enough space between. Normally it would be easier, but this 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 sway bar. I mean, has a grease fitting on this end, so it's not allowing me enough clearance here. We could take the grease fitting off and it will pop right in. But since we're doing the other side, we're not gonna bother to do that now, okay? Get down with your ratchet wrench, or your regular 19 millimeter wrench. You can tighten the top nut on the transmission mount. Get a longer wrench. We can put more torque on it. The longer the wrench or the tool is easier, the more torque you can apply. Watch you don't bust your knuckles. And in fact, when you're doing stuff like this, try and keep your hand open. Because if you keep a fist like that and it slips, you might get some skin taken off your knuckles. Okay, that's tight. And we're gonna tighten this one here. By using the impact gun. With, I believe, a 17. No, I'm sorry, that's a 19. and uh, a 19 up top. Technically, you should always tighten the nut and not the bolt. This is something I learned in engineering school. But in some cases, it's easier because I can reach this bolt head more easily than um, using a ratchet wrench to work the nut. Let's tighten uh, the nut for the ball joint.
Okay, once you tighten that, you run the cotter pin back in it, and you're good to go. Correction. Please do not do what I was about to do. Is forget to put the tie rod and nut back on and lock that with a cotter pin because you will lose control once you hit the first bump or something. Make sure that it holds for the cotter pin lines up and then run the cotter pin through it. Cotter pin will only go on the castle nuts, the nuts that look like a castle top. This will be a castle nut, what I call a castle nut. Okay, with this done, put the wheel back on, and then we are good to go.